Hello, welcome to Year 2 Curriculum Video. Hello, this is Mrs Carter. And I'm Mrs Gallis. And welcome to your Spring Curriculum Video. This is a video full of information about everything that will be taught in Year 2 during the Spring Term. We are all readers and writers. But to be a good writer, we need to be a good reader, which is why we emphasise reading daily at school and at home. Across the curriculum, we recall information from previous lessons and units of work. And this helps the children to make links with their learning, which they often enjoy and do so well in year two. It always generates interesting discussion in the classroom. So what information can we recall from our previous lesson? What is a question mark? Have a think. Brilliant, a question mark goes at the end of a question sentence. It goes in the place of a full stop, but only when a question is asked. And here are some examples of some question words. Who are you? How are you doing? Which way do I need to go? Where are the toilets? What is a prediction? Hmm, have a think. A prediction is what you may know so far, like the front cover of a book or a sentence you may have read to say what you think may happen next. For example, looking at this front cover of Lost and Found, I think the boy is going to lose his toy penguin and then find it in the sea. Because there's two characters, there's a boy and a penguin and they're on a boat in the middle of the sea. Let's see if we can recall some information from our previous unit of work. When do you need to use a full stop? Hmm. As you can see, a full stop is used at the end of a sentence. And it's true, I do love to eat cake. And finally, what information can we recall from our previous term? When should we use a capital letter? Yes, capital letters should be used at the beginning of a sentence, at the beginning of every sentence. And they should also be used for names and other proper nouns like places, days of the week and months of the year. During the spring term, children will continue to have their daily speed sound lesson. We're extremely proud of our children achieving well in the phonics check. We must continue to work on their phonics as this will enable our children to become fluent readers and help give them the confidence to explore a range of books. As you may remember, our 2021 New Year's resolution was to bounce into a book. We will still be encouraging our children to read regularly and develop their love for reading.
We are continuing with book bingo, so please remind your children to return their books and listen to them read as often as possible. And please don't forget that you can always refer to the school website to access all phonic sound lessons. After children's daily speed sound lesson, they will have their writing session, which will be based on a fiction or non-fiction book. Children will have plenty of exposure to the text. They will then hold a sentence. The teacher will say it and the children will repeat it through my turn, your turn. For example, the teacher will say, my turn. He picked up the food and started running away. Your turn. And then the children will repeat it. Once the children can remember the sentence, they will write it using the appropriate punctuation. And as you can see, the children will use the checkbox to mark their sentence. Using each other's ideas based on the text, children will build a sentence and they will use their phonic knowledge to help them spell new words. Children will then have a spelling punctuation and grammar focus. The example you can see is a grammar focus and children will learn about noun phrases. So there will be a lot of discussion about what a noun is. And hopefully in the first one, children will say the dog. And then other words in the noun phrase, for example, a bad, tell us more about the dog. Children will also have an opportunity to proofread. The example you can see is a spelling. Hopefully children recognise that jumped needs ed at the end and knocked needs the silent k. All of this learning will give the children the tools they need to write in a specific style. And in this case, it would be a newspaper report. In year two, we also have weekly creative writing lessons where children can continue to develop taught skills and explore new skills. And this term, we will be focusing on present and past tense, subordination and coordination, and sentences with different forms. For example, question and statement sentences. Every day, Monday to Friday, we have numeracy lessons where we all become mathematicians. Let's have a look at some of the information that you, we have been learning in previous lessons. Here is a question for you. Eva has three strawberries. Dexter has five strawberries. Alex has four strawberries. How many strawberries do they have? all together. So here's our question. Let's have a look at what our answer will be. We've got three strawberries. So in this case, we're using 10 frames and counters to help us to add with five strawberries and four strawberries. We automatically know that one of these frames holds 10 counters. So we don't have to count all of the counters now. We can do one ten and two ones. So we know there are 12 strawberries all together. We also know that our equation will say three, add five, add four. We can use our number line to find out the answer. Starting at three, we can jump on five and then we could jump on four and we find our answer is 12. Those are just two of the ways that we could find the answer to this calculation. Let's have a look at something else. We've been learning about money before Christmas in year two. Children need to recognise coins and they need to understand the value of each coin. Then they can begin to add the coins and add amounts and then find the change. In this instance, we've got a challenge which picture does not show 35 pence? It's very important that children read the questions. Have a look. Which does not show 35 pence? The final group does not show 35 pence. 
Each of the other two groups show 35 pence with different coins. Another go at recalling information from our previous unit of work, which was money. Four five pence coins are worth more than 10 pence coins. Do you agree? So if we've got four five pence coins and two 10 pence coins, are the five pence coins when added together worth more than the 10 pence coins? We're going to need to use our counting in fives knowledge to find this one out. So let's have a look at what, how we would do this. Four five pence coins and two ten pence coins. Counting in fives, that means we've got 20 pence. Counting in tens, we've got 20 pence. So do we agree that five, four five pence coins are worth more than two ten pence coins? No, we don't. The answer is false. We don't agree. And the reason being is because they are equal. Right, here's another true or false statement. The largest amount has been circled. Can you have a look and count the amounts in each of the boxes? Has the largest amount of money, not the largest amount of coins, been circled? What will you need to do to find the answer? That's right, you will need to find out how much is in each square. So you total all of those up and then you will find that the correct answer is the final box with what? £1.50. So, last term we continued learning about number and place value which is what children were learning in year one as well. Number and addition with subtraction. Again, they began learning about that in previous year groups. And then before we broke up, we looked at money. Now, this spring term, we will continue to use the knowledge learned in the autumn term. And this half, this part of the term, we are going to be looking at multiplication and division. Then we will move on to statistics, properties of shape and fraction. But how can you help? Ask your child to show you what they learnt in maths today. Talk to them about what they did. And then you can apply their learning in skills around the home. Help them to learn the 2, 3, 5 and 10 times table. You can see the 5 times table here. It's really important that your child can learn the times tables in and out of order. As I said, we will be looking at multiplication in year two at the beginning of the spring term. We've already started and the children are looking at STEM sentences. As you can see here, there are some examples for you to talk through with your child. They'll be able to tell you what they're learning. The first question says complete the stem sentences. There are how many equal groups with how many in each group? Well, there are three equal groups with two in each group. Let's complete the sentences in the second one. It's imperative that children read the questions. The last question did not ask us to find the answer. It didn't want to know how many there were altogether. In this question, we move on a step. There are how many equal groups? We can see that immediately there are two equal groups. And because we're recognising five, as soon as we look at, we know we've got five in each group. Most of us now don't need to count five. We know when we see five. This time it asks us how many baguettes there are all together. Well, we all know our number bonds of 10, so we know that five add five is 10. Now we're looking at it from a multiplication angle. So we know that 
two lots of five is ten. So there are ten baguettes altogether. On the final question, it asks us to describe the equal groups. What is the same and what is different in each group? Well, what can I see? Mm. I can see children in each group and I can see some carriages in each group. I can see one train in each group. In the first train, there are two carriages with five children in each group. Two carriages with five children in each group. In the second train, there are five carriages with two children in each group. So do we have the same amount of children in each group? Of course we do. We have two lots of five, which is ten, or we have five lots of two, which is also ten. In our curriculum area of learning this term, after our wonderful experience of the Great Fire of London, we are moving on to the wonderful world of chocolate. Now, this is always an exciting subject to be learning in year two. You will receive the knowledge organisers with your child about the learning they will be doing in history. Not only do we cover history, but we also cover some parts of geography when we're learning about chocolate, because we find out where the cocoa bean has come from. This term, we'll have our wow day. We'll learn about Ghana and where the cocoa bean comes from. The cocoa bean does come from other countries as well, but we focus on the one from Ghana because that's the one that produces the cocoa beans that supply Cabri's world. We will learn about two significant people in history. Two Brothers and a Chocolate Factory is a book that we will use to support our learning. The two brothers are George Cadbury and Richard Cadbury. As we progress through the term, please ask your children about what they are learning in curriculum. Their previous unit was, as I said, the Great Fire of London. And we visited a place called Bourneville. Can the children remember Bourneville? What country is it in? Ellie Manor is in Bourneville and we visited this place in December. Bourneville is in the city of Birmingham, which is in the country of England. So, what information and learning can you recall from previous work, last term? <clears throat> we talked about the living conditions and working conditions of the people during the Great Fire of London. What were the living and working conditions like for people a long time ago? People were generally poor and had very little money. They had few possessions and sometimes dangerous working conditions. They did not always earn a fair wage for the job they did. Throughout all of our curriculum subjects, we have our schemas running through them. You will have noticed these in some of Mrs Park's assemblies. During curriculum, we will be looking at transport, how the cocoa bean gets transported from Ghana to Britain, and also about topical issues on what's included in our chocolate, whether we should be eating it or whether we shouldn't be. We'll be looking at fashion, and how trends have changed, packaging has changed, chocolate flavours have changed. And with technology, we will be looking at the changes over time with how technology has increased the use and the flavours and the, the way chocolate is transported around the world. We will learn about significant people in history. The Cabri brothers, George and Richard Cabri, were Quakers who wanted to improve the lives of working class people. We will use research techniques to find out what they did to achieve this. We will learn where the cocoa bean is grown, which is in Ghana, and we did that, we will be doing that on our wow day. 
and we will look at how the cocoa bean is produced and sent on to the consumer. We will learn how and where the cocoa bean is transported and how it becomes chocolate. We might even get to taste some chocolate. Yum yum. At the beginning of this term, your child will bring home the knowledge organisers for our next theme in science, seeds, soil and sunshine. Please keep this knowledge organiser to hand. It will help you to each week discuss with your child what they've been learning in science. It will also help you to understand the lessons that we are delivering. Let's recall I wonder what information. Well, natural materials are materials that are naturally found around us. So we might have to dig them out of the ground, we might have to grow them or take them from living things. For example, wood is a natural material. On the other hand, man made materials are natural materials that are changed through chemical processes by man by us. So glass and paper are actually man-made materials. At Food Schema Web we'll focus on farming and how it has changed over time. Our Fashion Schema Web will focus on During the spring term, children will be learning all about plants, which will children will be true scientists carrying out many fun experiments. Hi, Mrs. Blewett here. I'm really excited to tell you what your child is going to be learning for the spring term 2022. Uh, I'm going to go through what we're learning in literacy and numeracy and in our curriculum work and also in our emotional and social skills. In handwriting last term, we practiced all of the letter families. So we've now learnt the ladder letters, the curly caterpillar letters, the one-armed robot letters and the zigzag monster letters. Now for some children that means that they can now write these independently, for other children it means they can just trace them. So now what we're going to do this term is each child is going to work on their own individualised target. So I look at which letter they need to work on and that is the one that they practice until they can write all of the letters of the alphabet. Uh, formed correctly so that later on in their school life they can learn to join the letters. In our phonics this term we are going to be starting to learn speed sound set two. So I'm going to run through with you the sounds and also the ditties, the phrase and the picture that goes with each sound. This helps the children to remember them. So we've got I and it's I, may I play. E, what can you see? I, fly high. O, blow the snow. O, who at the zoo. The children think this one's hilarious. Oh, look at a book. Ah, start the car. Oh, shut the door. Eh, that's not fair. Uh, and twirl. In our talk for writing this term we are going to be doing the story The Tiger Who Came to Tea. 
Unlike last term, we'll be learning to story map it and retell the story. And before the end of this half term, you will get the story map sent home and the children can read it to you. I know last half term when we did the story of Little Red Riding Hood, the children really enjoyed sharing their story map with you and they really feel a sense of achievement that they can read a story. So we will enjoy doing that this term. In our numeracy this term, we are learning to count to 50. Why don't you get your child to join in counting with me? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. We're also going to be practising counting backwards from 20. Join in with me. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well done. Last term in our numeracy work, we were doing some work on mastering number um, and we're going to carry on with that this term. I want to show you what subitising is. If you say to your children, what does subitise mean? They will tell you that it means look and say. So, for example, if you look at this number, they look and they say three. They don't count it. So we've been looking at lots of different arrangements of numbers. So, for example, we've got three, five, which that is the typical dice pattern. So the children know that really well. When you go on to more irregular patterns, then we've had to practice it. So you've got three. They find that much harder because you've got two and one, which is a really useful thing to know. It is important for the children to know that it's two and one, but they have to learn that that two and one also makes three. The whole set is three. So then we've also got a four. The children have learned that that's two and two, which is four or double two. So we're going to carry on our work on subitising. We've also used something called a reckon rec that you might not have heard of before. The children have used this. It's like a miniature abacus. And the children have practised using these beads and we've practised something called one push so they know that they've got to do the same again. They've got to subitise, they don't count the beads, they just push it. So I might say one push five and they've got to push all of the beads across. All of this is helping them to get more numerate, to get, be able to use numbers in their numeracy work. So we're going to do lots more work on that this term. Alongside our mastering number work in numeracy, we're also going to be doing lots of work on time. This is really important for the children to build on their vocabulary. So we will be learning about the days of the week, the months of the year. We'll also be thinking about time words such as first and next and last and how to sequence events. And then we'll go on to starting to tell the time. So looking at o'clock times. In the afternoons, we split our time in the rainbow room between our curriculum time and our emotional and social skill work. In our curriculum time, this half term, we're going to be learning all about houses and homes. This will go right from learning uh, about vocabulary that, of furniture and things that you find in the house and what rooms there are in a house, onto the outside of a building and labelling the different parts of a house. Then we'll be looking at different types of houses, so semi-detached, bungalow, etc. And we look at some photos of houses from around the Rensnest estate that the children will be familiar with. The children will also really enjoy going on Google Earth and looking at their own house. And we will do some really lovely paintings of their children's own houses. Finally, I want to tell you about our emotional and social skills work. Last term, we covered the four main emotions of happy, sad, angry and scared. 
we're going to start this term by doing some work all about the story the colour monster and this will bring together all of those emotions that the children have been learning about but also introduce the idea of feeling confused and mixed up and not sure what emotion that you're feeling it's a lovely story that we really enjoy sharing with the children and we'll do some lovely artwork and lots of sorting emotions and thinking about how we feel and how we can recognise emotions in other people. So, as you can see, lots of learning and lots of fun in Year 2. Also, Year 2 will enhance their learning through WOW days, enrichment days and off-site visits. And we all know how much you enjoy the Great Fire of London and the Wow Day attached to that, the visit to Selly Manor and the Enrichment Day just before Christmas. We'd just like to say thank you so much for your ongoing support. Please continue to support your child with their homework and plenty of reading at home. We know what a fantastic impact it has on your child's learning. Please do not hesitate to be in contact with us if you have any questions. We're always here to help. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. As well as an adult, reading daily to your child within the classroom. Reading is also practised every day within our phonics lessons. Your child may come home and talk about completing ditty sheets. These are very simple stories that are read in pairs and are fully decodable. This helps the children to practice reading words that contain sounds that they have been taught in that lesson. In Sunflowers will try and hear your child read every Tuesday. Your child will bring home a book that they should be able to have a go at reading using their phonics. This may be in the form of a story or a blending book. They will also come home with a book for you to read and share at home. Please could you write in your child's reading record once you have read with your child. And please encourage your child to bring in their reading pack every day. This term in Sunflowers we will continue to learn new sounds and consolidate ones already learned. In particular, we're beginning to introduce special friends within set two sounds. Special friends are two or three letters that make a sound, such as sh, a and e. Children will also be encouraged to practice writing these sounds within words using their thread fingers. So, they've just been introduced to the word a, a may I play. And we would ask the children to practice writing the sound A. And then we would ask the children to have a go at writing some words that contain the A sound, such as pay. So the children would count how many sounds they can hear in their word. So pay, p, A. There are two sounds that you can hear, P and A. However, it is three letters because it is a special friend and we would ask the children to write down what they can hear. Pay. P. A. Pay. Then we'd ask the children again and what they'd do is they would Mark their own work, give themselves a tick if they've got it right, p, and give themselves a tick if they've got the A correct too. P, A, P. Then we'd ask the children to have a go at writing another word. So it might be something like play, p, l, A, play. And again, the children would have a go at writing that word. If the children do get it incorrect, then they are encouraged to not rub it out or cross it out but write it correctly next to the word. We will also continue to practice writing our letter formation, looking at letter size, orientation and using capital and lowercase letters.
this term we will continue with numbers up to 20. This will be done through practical and written activities. This includes looking at place value and how numbers are made up of tens and ones. Also, the children will move their learning forward and will be continuing to explore addition and subtraction using practical and written activities using a variety of resources such as cubes, part whole models and number lines. On the screen you will see a subtraction problem. It says the children built 10 snowmen. Two snowmen melted overnight. How many snowmen are there now? Previously we would have asked the children to count all the snowmen. So they would know that there are 10 altogether. Then the children would have been encouraged to cross out two of them because that's how many are melted. And then count how many are left. We're moving the children's learning on and encouraging the children to use a number line. And this is how we would expect them to do that. So they would look at the number sum, the number sentence, which is 10, take away 2. So the children find number 10 on the number line and pop a circle around it. Then they would have to know which way to jump. So they know that they have to jump twice because it's 10 take away 2 and the children will learn that because it's taking away they need to jump in that direction so the numbers get smaller just like that. So then the children would jump twice 1, 2 and land on the correct answer which is 8. touch with us with anything. If you have a question to ask or some work to show us, maybe you're going to become scientists at home and join in with our science activities of growing. Remember you can email us photos, you can email us questions. There's the school mobile WhatsApp that you can also send photos in or contact us if it's urgent. Please let us know what you're getting up to at home. We'd love to see that. Any questions, anytime, just ask. Thank you.